Can your robot see the line before it's too late? In the robot game, those black and white lines on the mat aren't just decoration. They're your robot's best chance to square up, stop precisely, and stay on target. In this video, I'll show you how to train your LEGO Spike Prime robot to detect lines reliably, just like winning teams do in First LEGO League. On most First LEGO League mission mats, you'll see black lines surrounded by a white outline. These lines give teams the chance to stop, square up, and turn precisely throughout their mission. But here's the problem. Too many times, the robot senses the wrong color or the wrong brightness and stops way too early. We're going to be showing you how you can overcome that challenge and make sure that your robot hits its mark and turns perfectly or makes its move every time. All you need to follow along with this lesson is a Spike Prime kit. We went ahead and built Driving Base 1 and attached a color sensor to it. I think the directions are Driving Base 3 in the Competition Ready unit. You can also print out some of our downloadable printables from the description of this video, or you can use a black marker or black tape to make your own marks. Let's start simple. Challenge one, drive forward and stop exactly on the line. We're using our horizontal line printable. Let's run a couple trials. The first few trials, we're just gonna tell this robot to start driving until it sees a black line. We'll see that a few times it stops correctly, and then some other times it seems to stop a little bit early. We made these mats covered in gray to mimic the first LEGO League Challenge mat that has lots of colors before you ever get to those black lines. This robot is going to drive for about two rotations and then begin checking its color sensor. We're telling the robot don't start looking for a black line until you're near the target. That way, it doesn't get fooled by dark patches on the mat. Here's the code from that first robot that's a little less reliable. We set our movement motors, we set our movement speed, we set one motor rotation to be the circumference of the wheel, and then we told it to start moving, wait until it's black, and then stop. Sometimes it overshot the line, sometimes it stopped too early. So we're gonna change this just a little bit and tell it to move forward for two rotations. We know it doesn't need to start looking for a line until it's gone forward about two rotations or about 30 centimeters. After that, we want to change the speed to slow it down so that it definitely hits the line and stops on the line. Then we'll tell it to start moving forward, wait until the color sensor is black and then stop moving. Let's send it to our robot and see what happens. And there it is, clean stop, right on the line. Let's level up. Challenge number two, stop on the line, then turn to reach a second goal. We'll use our T-shaped line for this one. This robot is gonna drive until it sees a black line, and then it's gonna stop and make a turn to arrive at our circle target. You can print out this circle target or you can make one with just a marker and a piece of paper. We're gonna be using that same drive until black logic and then we're gonna be adding a turn and a second drive command looking for another black line where we will do a half motor rotation to stop right in the center of the circle. Let's take a look at our code. We're using the same drive until black logic, and then we're gonna add a turn and a second drive command. This code we can keep because it worked the first time. I might change this down to just one rotation since I have a little bit less space that I'm working with for this. So move forward for one rotation at that 50% speed, slow down to 20, start looking for the black line. I'm using our my block yaw turn that we created a few weeks ago because this is a great way to get precise turns. We have another fantastic video on creating this block, but it lets me just go in here and add a yaw turn. And what I'm gonna do is say negative 50 because when we used our unit circle to calculate the 
turn, I saw that it was a little bit more than negative 45 degrees, and so negative 50 should be the yaw turn we need to make. Then we're going to tell it to drive forward, and I think we'll just go one and a half rotations at that full speed of 50%, and then we should slow down and start looking for that black line. So I'm gonna say set movement speed to 20%, slow things down, start moving forward. We're gonna to go to control and get a wait until block, and then grab this sensor block, wait until our color sensor sees black. At that point, we should stop moving, and then we're gonna have it go forward for 0.5 rotations to get into the circle. Let's test it out by clicking play and see how our robot does. Excellent. Let's combine everything for this final challenge. Challenge three, start from one line, drive to a second line, and then we'll stop in the goal zone. This is where your robot's consistency really gets tested. Can it detect two lines in a row and still land where you want it? Let's break down what goes wrong in these two examples. This first one, we don't tell this robot to wait before it starts looking for a line. It immediately is looking for that second black line and hits the other part of the T. This one, a 90 degree angle with that light sensor on the right side isn't enough of a turn to find the next line. After learning from our mistakes, we're ready to send our code to this robot to have a working example to accomplish the challenge. Let's dive into the code. Here's our code from challenge number two. We're gonna use this same code to be successful with challenge three. I'm gonna go right down here and unhook this from our code. So we need to drive forward for one rotation and get to that first line. And when we get to that first line, we want to yaw turn, not negative 50 degrees, we're now trying to go straight down. And I did an example where 90 degrees wasn't enough, so we're doing negative 98 degrees. This is gonna ensure that we hit that next line below us. I am gonna speed things up and set movement speed to 50%. And then we are going to move forward for 1.5 rotations. This makes sure that we're not looking for a black line when we're turning on top of that T. Once we've done that, then we can set our movement speed to go slow to start looking for that line start moving forward, and we're gonna wait until that color sensor is black. At that point, I could say stop moving, but I know in my yaw turn, the very first step is stop moving, so I'm just gonna use that yaw turn, and we should turn to the right now, so we're gonna use a positive number, and for this one, we're gonna do 98 degrees, and then we're gonna tell it to go ahead and move forward for one rotation, that way we get past that black line and don't accidentally run into it a second time, which would tell our robot to finally stop because we're at the circle. So at this point, we've made it past the second line, we've made our turn, we've gotten out of length of the line, now we're looking for the circle. So we are gonna slow our speed down to about 20%, another wait until block, we want that one to be looking for color black. And once we see that color black, we want to move forward about half a rotation to get inside the circle and then come to a complete stop. So this right here is gonna be a successful final run for our challenge. I hope you've been testing yourself with these three challenges. Use the provided printables to test yourself at home or at school. Here's where this skill shows up in real robot games. You'll see lines near launch zones, under mission models, or as alignment guides on the first LEGO League Challenge map. If your robot can detect and react to those lines, your missions will be faster and more reliable. I'm gonna give you a few quick tips to finish up, but before I do that, I want you to leave us a comment. Have you tried these challenges? Were you able to be successful? Do you use reflected light or do you look for colors whenever you're driving down? 
So now for those quick tips to make your robot perform better and score higher in the robot game. You can use this color sensor in reflected light mode for even more control. A black line typically shows up as less than seven or 8% reflected light, and a gray might show up as about 67% reflected light, while a white piece of paper shows up typically as 90 to 97% reflected light. On your mat, avoid harsh lighting or deep shadows. Depending on your lighting arrangement, your robot might see reflected light differently depending on the overhead lights. And for the best consistency and reliability, slow down the robot right before scanning for lines. These tips can make a huge difference in the effectiveness of your robot. Do you want to try this at home? Download all the printable line mats for free using the link in the description. Practice these challenges with your team and you'll be ready for the real robot game missions in no time. If this helped you, be sure to hit like, subscribe, and leave us a comment telling us about your favorite challenge.